Okay. Can you hear me now? You should be able to hear me now. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm awake, my, but my microphone wasn't. Get out of here. Ah, boy, it's always something, isn't it? Okay. Why don't we, why don't we uh, do take two on this? Hi. How you doing? Uh, I'm awake, and I'm vocal. That's a, that's a novel concept. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. My microphone... Uh, crapped out on me and no the power's on I don't know you know it's always something I'm looking at the uh, little the little doohickey here and it's it's flashing I don't know what's going on but you know what we're all in the air and we got a microphone we do have audio now so I'll just not worry about that anyway as I said before uh, I am the vocal and crackpot cartoonist wide awake John Lotshaw thanks again for coming um boy what a way to what a way to start a show, huh? Uh, anyway, uh, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're watching, and um, we're gonna do some coloring tonight. I think is what we're gonna do. We're gonna finish up from uh, Total Request Tuesday, and um, um, yeah, I had to switch over to the microphone that's on the on the webcam uh, instead of using this bad boy. Um, I gotta figure out what's going on. I don't. That's that's disturbing. Then again, I only paid twenty five dollars for the microphone, so you know. Um, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, we didn't have the show uh, yesterday because I was um, sleeping, and the reason why I was tired and shagged out was because on Wednesday we didn't have a show because I was in Ringgold, Georgia. I was teaching a class to. I taught two classes. Uh, to uh, one was to um, <clears throat> elementary school to preteens, uh, and it was the basics of, of cartooning, basically how to how to draw a character, build a character up, as you've seen me do from basic shapes, and um, how you can take that same basic shape and turn it into anything by uh, uh, expanding and, and adding detail. Uh, and then the um, uh, the second the second class, which was to older kids, it was a smaller class. The first class had about 25 kids in it and some parents, and then the second class was was older kids, and that was more on uh, storytelling, how to tell a story and make a comic book, and and uh, basically talked about three act structure and how even three act structure could be used to uh, tell 99 percent of the stories that we tell in the Western world. Um, even even a joke can fit into a three-act structure, and I showed how that basic concept can, can, can be the basis for any almost anything. And um, let's see. We do have a question here real quick. I'm trying to see. Uh, have I thought about doing New York Comic Con? Have I thought about doing New York Comic Con? I would love to do New York Comic Con. Um, Honestly, I've only ever been to New York City once in my life, and um, you know, I, I, you know, just I'm just I'm just a country boy from Georgia, but no, I I, I would love to do New York Comic Con. Um, the problem with those shows and is they're so bloody expensive. I mean, it's expensive. Well, New York City is expensive to begin with, anyway, but you know, they're charging artists. Three hundred dollars for these tables, and I, I don't know who's able to afford these things because, uh, you know, you go to a show and you're and you're doing good to sell three hundred dollars worth of stuff. What's the point? I'm not going to go all the way to New York City to break even, because uh, you know if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere, and I'm not going there to to break even if I'm going to break even. Uh, so I, I that's one of the reasons why I don't do a lot of shows is because. I'm cheap. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> no, because I'm a capitalist and I want to. I want to maximize my profit. Uh, Dragon Con um, provides a table. I'm, I mean, I, I gotta have to. I have to say, you know, I have my my beefs with Dragon Con, but one thing that I love about Dragon Con is they provide a table. They they say, come on, you're a guest. Here's a table, free, and I have a table, and because they're local. Um, I live at home. I stay at home and drive into the city to, to do the show. And so it's 
uh, the, the, the barrier, the, the level of um, profitability, the break-even point is much lower for me than it would be for, say, even uh, like Heroes Con, which is a fantastic show, and I would love to go and do that. I would love to do these big shows. I would love to do San Diego Comic Con again because San Diego, San Diego is a, a wonderful city. I love San Diego. Um, you know, C two E two in Chicago. Um, you know, I, there's there's family roots in Chicago, and I would love to go over there and, and you know and uh, and go and, and look into that. I would love to go. Uh, um, you know, and, and New York Comic Con. I would love to do New York Comic Con. Bill was able to do New York Comic Con because his daughter lives. In New York City, so he has a cheap way of uh, of, of making it uh, profitable for him. If he didn't have uh, a daughter living in New York, he he wouldn't do it. And so uh, I don't have that advantage. So um, New York Comic Con, I would love to do it, but I have got I would have to uh, be at the point where I know that I'm going to pull down. To two thousand twenty five hundred dollars, not in sales but in profit, really, in order to to you know a, a, a profit above uh, the cost of my mate- my 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 product. Uh, I'm gonna have to clear twenty five hundred dollars because I'm gonna have because the, the 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 cost of the tables are so expensive at those kinds of shows, um, and it's ridiculous. It really is because it's freezing out a lot of artists, and it's just it's just greed. It's just greed. Um, the the these cons have forgotten, I think what what the cons were about. The cons were about the comics and and the fans, and it's become this super profitable thing now, and um, and I think it's it's really 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 ruined it. So, uh, I, you know we're we're only eight minutes into the show and I've already done one rant. We've had, we're eight minutes into the show. I've had one major technical f- foul up. And one rat. So there's only one thing left, and that's for me to go in and start hawking my prop, my stuff. And uh, look, kids, I finally made a new Patreon slide. Isn't that nice? Patreon, yes, the Patreon page is over at patreoncom centaurs. And uh, um, if you are watching this on uh, uh, the replay, you're not one of the regulars. Then you know. Then you know that. Um, uh, I am um, uh, really excited about the, the Patreon uh, program, the whole concept of it, and uh, there's um, lots of different levels of support. All the new Accidental Centaur strips will be going through Patreon first, and for first and foremost, so um, you need to, if you want to see the seven centauri as it's as it's being produced and and I know it's been kind of it's been hasn't had that lately, but uh, yeah, we can. Well, we're gonna. Um, uh, I'm gonna get back on that to the this weekend. But anyway, uh, those go up there. There's also a level which has the naughty bits, the uh, return of not safe for work Friday, uh, which means I need to get that posted while it's still Friday. But anyway, that's. Uh, all over there on patreon.com go check it out please consider supporting because it does every little bit helps and uh, even at five dollars a month it's a it's a big help and i do appreciate the support um another way that you can help support is with facebook and joining the facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash accidental centaurs all the, the announcements go there first they also go out to twitter but they go through facebook so if you want to get it Hot and fresh off of the uh, uh, off the keyboard here. Then go right over to Facebook and like that page, and um, you'll uh, find out when uh, when I'm doing things like these shows and uh, when there's updates uh, to the site. Uh, all that good stuff will go there first. A new slide that I'm going to add that I've just added, and I've been meaning to, to add this in for a while, and I finally got around to doing it, is the Etsy store. Uh, I've had this up for a while, and I haven't um, uh, uh, haven't um, mentioned it, but I do have an Etsy store, and there's lots of original artwork up there, and I, I need to add more. 
but um, you can buy a, uh, original artwork, original pages of Axiomal Centaurs. There's also some of the naughty stuff there too. Um, and, uh, and I need to set it up. I'm going to set it up so I'll be able to take commissions through there as well. But um, yeah, the Etsy, Etsy.com slash shop slash Accidental Centaurs. And uh, you can, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, as I said, be able to buy original uh, artwork there. So uh, that's going to be a place to purchase that. Uh, there's also the books. The uh, two uh, compilation books that are available on uh, Lulu. These are full color books. They have the first three stories uh, over here in this book and the uh, full 100 page um, graphic novel dictating the course is in that volume and uh, those are available as I said they're full color. There's also digital download versions that are um, a little more uh, budget price. Uh, that's part of the problem with uh, print on demand. It's it's great for uh, you know having stuff on demand, but unfortunately you don't get the volumes of scale. Uh, that's one of the uh, disadvantages of it. But anyway, they're beautiful books. So if you if you um, want to invest in that, you can do that over there. Uh, there's also the uh, the adult books, and those are on uh, Lulu as well. Um, there's uh, volume one, volume two, and volume three, and uh, again, those are all full color over on Lulu. And um, then there's uh, going to be uh, Dragon Con coming up. Appearances. I'm going to be at Dragon Con, and that will be at uh, September 1st through 4th. Um, we will be in the uh, America's Mart, which is the um, 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 Old Atlanta Merchandise Mart, Building 3. And um, if you're going to be in Atlanta coming in for that, please come by. I'll be uh, at the table next to uh, Bill Holbrook and... Um, and Tom Heinches of the the Eisner winning Tom Heinches, I have to keep saying that, because he did win Eisner for his wonderful magazine, Hogan's Alley. So uh, uh, come on by for that. Uh, then um, nope 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 nope. There we go. There it is. Tomorrow, who is calling me? I'm I'm on the air. Thank you. Hold on. Let's see who that is. I have no idea who that is. Live television. I thought I put this on Do Not Disturb. Who do I know in Adairsville? I don't know anyone in Adairsville. But I'm going to put this on Do Not Disturb. There. That's taken care of. Uh, Atlanta Comic Convention. Uh, that is going to be Sunday. This Sunday, coming up, one-day show at the uh, Marriott Hotel Century Center, which is at I-85 and Claremont Road here in Atlanta. Um, please come by uh, if you're in the Atlanta area. Uh, even if you're not in the Atlanta area, get on a plane and come by. No, don't do that. Uh, this is a fun little show. It's a one-day one show, $5, very comics-oriented. There's going to be lots of dealers there with... Uh, uh, you know, old comics and, and books and things like that. Great show. Come on by. Uh, we're going to be at it's a wake-up call. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a pant load, guys. I knew that was coming. Um, anyway, I knew that was coming. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. Uh, I've been wanting to get into this show for a while, as I've said. Uh, I usually go to the ones on uh, Super Bowl... Sunday, and uh, uh, so I'm really excited about about going there and, and doing this show. It's going to be a lot of fun. So there we go. That's the obligatory stuff. We've gotten that out of the way, uh, which means now we start doing art stuff. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, art, 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 um, art is. Never finished, only abandoned. And I think I've abandoned what I'm going to do. Where is it? Where is this? where is that? I'm really organized today, aren't I? 
Let's see, is this it? Oh, okay, great. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, here we go. All right. Um, no, nope, that's not the original. I don't know what I did with the original. Oh, it's in the scan. Okay. All right. Uh, if you may remember, um, I did, I'm going to move that camera out of the way. We did uh, a picture of Patty, and, uh, and I did it in pencil. So the other day, what I did was I went and got, and um, I did this yesterday because uh, <laughs> I was going to do a show yesterday, but I didn't uh, show up, so we're doing it tonight. Uh, I went over to the to the to the um, uh, to the light table, which you can see. Um, you can see right here. This is the light table right here. Uh, this was given to me by Greg Cravens, uh, who is the uh, the artist on the buckets, and he does the um, uh, great web comic of his own called um, uh, called Hubris. And he also, uh, you know, does a lot of uh, uh, um, advertising art. Um, he was the creator of Shoney Bear. Here, you know, saw my may have seen my post talking about Shoney's. Shoney's is a chain of restaurants in the southeast, and they used to be the uh, uh, back in the seven, 60s and 70s. They were the big boy franchisee, and um, so. What we have, so 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 I, I took it over there and I and I traced it using a uh, the um, uh, um, Copic multiliner pens because I knew that I was going to have skin tones here and I didn't want it to smudge. So uh, these pens are great for that because they don't they won't smudge. Uh, as much they uh, get a little bit, but not that much. So they kind of they kind of uh, clean um, uh, let, lets me color nice and cleanly. So and you know what? And I am and I am ignoring all of Tom's uh, uh, jokes about um, uh, sleeping because because I can. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so what we have here is I have Patty, and I don't, and as you can see, there's um, there's a few things missing, like her eyes, and that's because the way that I've been doing the eyes is I've been doing those as just color without an outline on them, so we'll add that in a moment, um, and I don't have I don't have clothes on her because I want to kind of do some blending where her clothing will kind of blend more into the body. And another thing that I need, and that I don't have, and I need to ask, uh, and I want to ask you guys to do, is uh, I need colors. Um, I don't have set colors for Patty because, uh, well, first off, I really haven't done her in color yet. When, when she appears canonically in the strip is in the... Um, uh, is in Lair of the Insectars, and she's kind of a, um, a spider. She's a spider down here. And um, I imagine that her hair is more is 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 more realistic, is 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 black. Um, and then, but in another appearance that she's in, uh, which is which is in which will be part of. Um, uh, playground rapper projects that are going going on right now. Uh, I she we we I've got her. So she's the the idea is that she's kind of a she was a an an an, an anime fan. So when she was transformed into a centaur, she kind of took on some anime like characteristics. And of course, one of the defining characteristics of any character in in anime and and, and manga is weird colored hair. So, uh, what colors do we do here? And I'm going to just throw that op open to you because, because I have I have plenty of colors, of all colors, and um, so I'm I'm going to take some uh, suggestions and and for what color to make 
Patty. Her hair, uh, the pelt, and the um, the clothing. So, while I'm getting the pens down, and here's the pens. Don't worry, you don't have to memorize what color, all the colors we have here. I'm just showing you. Um, but these are the, um, the, the Copic pens. And um, uh, so you know, we've got some nice pinks over here, some, some kind of you know, um, magenta-ish pinks, uh, lots of greens, lots of blues. Uh, purples are, are not as many of those. Got some oranges here that are nice. Uh, of course, lots of earth tones, <laughs> of course, uh, and skin tones here, uh, in he up in here, uh, in yellows. So, uh, let's see what we got. Olive green hair and orange belt. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Kind of got an olive here. Let's see what we got here. Let's um, ooh, set that aside. And um, yeah, the G99. That's what I'm going to do for the for the for the hair. Uh, that's that's. I think that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. Um, okay. Uh, what about her the the pupils? We need to do something. Need to do something really quick for the for the pupils. Um, I'm going to make her hair and. Well, I think uh, I think James, we're going to go we're going to go with the um, kind of an olivish green for the hair, and then the tail will match. So um, we'll and we'll come into the pelt in just a moment. But uh, I'm just actually I'm going to do a quick kind of bit in there just to oh yeah that's that's actually going to be nice. That's going to be nice. So. All right, so that that's gonna work. That's gonna work nice for the hair. Uh, so what do we want to do for the uh, for the eyes there? Any any suggestions? You um, looking for suggestions for the for the eyes? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start here with the uh, lose my glasses here so that I can see a little better. Um, I think this is going to be what I want for... Nope, that's not the one I want. That's why I tried them out over here on some other paper. Yeah, okay, I think that's going to work better. So, uh, this is going to be for her skin tones. Green eyes. It, right here, that right there is what I love about the Copics, is being able to do that. Being able to do that. I would, I would have killed as a kid whenever I got a skin tone marker to be able to run it over um, a black line because it would just normally just turn into um, a kind of pinkish, blackish brackish mess it would be awful just awful so there we go see there's a tiny little bit of smearing in there but it, it's, I, I can live with that it's not it's not too bad it honestly isn't too bad now when I finish this that this line is only a temporary line uh, because I will go back over it with a brush mark, with a brush pen, and um, give it a lot more oomph, a lot more definition. Uh, no, uh, purple eyes being no, not my canon. Um, James is asking, purple eyes would indicate magical ability, not 
not not not not in my stuff. I don't know if that's somebody else's. But you know, purple eyes. Right, if you want to do purple eyes, we can do purple eyes. I don't mind doing purple eyes. Um, that's a nice. Do we want to do a deep purple or a light purple? That's a that's a good. That's that's the next question because I got all kinds of purple. Oops, no, that's the chisel tip. So, Yeah, purple traditionally was the color of royalty because it was such a difficult and expensive dye. So that's where the term born to the purple comes from, um, which I'd never heard until Joe Straczynski used it for a title of Babylon 5. Okay, now I'm gonna I will go back over this a little later with with an, with another pass on this pen too, because it's looking you know it's a little patchy as the as the ink absorbs into the paper it, it looks a little 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 sketchy so um, that's one of the nice things about the Copics is you can build up layers of color and. Um, Okay, so so I'm thinking a lighter purple for the for the eyes if we're going to do purple. I'm going to make sure that I don't. No, that's not going to. No, that's not going to. Because one of the disadvantages of these pens, and uh, I think that's good. I think that's going to be good. Let's see. Let me. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I think that that purple is going to work out nicely for the eyes. Um, purple and green—that's a great combination. Lex Luthor colors. <laughs> Um, one thing I need to do is I need to, is I need to is to draw in here where there's going to be kind of a, a, a glint in her hair. And I've never been any good at this part of it. I'll tell you who is really good at doing this kind of thing is is Guy Guy Gilchrist, because um, Fritzy Aunt Fritzy has has this kind of a glint in her hair. And Guy inks Nancy with a brush. Um, which means I'm in even more awe of his abilities as, a, as an artist. Normally, I would just, you know, set this up as another layer on Photoshop and do this in Photoshop. Uh, but I can't do that here. I have to... Uh, I have to do it the old-fashioned way. I have to draw it. Ugh, so, what was I thinking, huh? What was I thinking? Yeah, I like the olive. The olive green, that's a... Uh, that was a good call there, Matt. Very good call.
There we go. Maybe it was a little quiet. Oh, next week I should have a new title sequence for this show. Um, I'm actually started working on it today, and I think I got a I got a great idea for it. I think it's I'm really looking forward to. It. I think you're gonna like it. Peg doesn't look built enough. Uh, um, that's an unusual criticism to lob at one of my females. Um, anyway. Now this is back behind her hair, so we're gonna. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna tint that or do or Um, but one of the as I as I was starting I was starting to say and then I got kind of distracted somehow. <laughs> Go I, I know I know me distracted I know I know. Uh, but uh, I was saying that the the great thing about these Copic markers is um, they they are alcohol based. So I can lay down color and then when I can and then you'll see this in a little bit. I'll come back with a different color and lay it in there and it will dis and the alcohol will dissolve basically the 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 ink that I've laid down and allow it to blend um, so that's uh, isn't there a website called will it blend where they, they, they take anything like iPhones and uh, automobile parts and stuff like that and then put it in a in an industrial blender and see if it what happens um, Well, in this case, it will blend because that's what it's designed to do. So I and I was experimenting with that with a piece that I I really can't show on this on this broadcast uh, because it's for the not safe for work Friday. Um, I might be able to to do a demonstration here with Patty once we get into doing her pelt, um, but. I got some nice shading effects on a picture of Alex and um, uh, shading all portions of his of his body um, <laughs> just leave it at that and uh, um, by by laying down color and then coming in with it with another color for the for the highlight color or for the shadow color and then use and then and then coming back with the original and blending that so that was uh, that that actually worked out really nice been watching some tutorials on YouTube on how to do the um, Copic shading all right now that's a little splotchy in here and again like I said I'll, I'll be coming back over this and um, uh, so, uh, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the, um, I'm gonna do the the hooves now. Oh, as I was starting to say, one, one of the pro, one of the disadvantages with the Copics is um, is overfilling. It's very easy to overfill these things, and when it, that happens, you'll open, um, you'll open the cap. And gravity has pulled all of that extra ink in here and it's oversaturated the tip and it just ends up with this big blob that just you pull this out and then blorch and um, and then you scream because um, you know that was the last color that you were gonna lay down every holding was complete except for that one color and then you just blorched it up and uh, and if that isn't a word it is now
Uh, I'm going to check something here real quick. Check something over here on the on the in the software that I'm using for the show. By the way, that music that you hear in the background is going to be is a, is a long version of the um, uh, music that's going to be the um, the opening music for the show. Uh, so, a um, um, little preview there. I forgot that I had it in I already had it in the playlist. Uh, but anyway, all right. So so now I'm. What I'm doing is kind of putting a little bit of a shine there on on the hoof. Now I can go back with. Uh, probably couldn't even see that, could you? Um, so now I can come back in with this and blend it a little bit. Uh, okay, pelt color. While I'm, while I'm doing this, we need to talk about pelt color for the pelt. So what color do we want to make the pelt? Okay. Oh, I know someone. I mean, while I'm waiting on a blue, Linus blue. Oh, okay. Uh, that's an interesting color. All right. Let me let me go. Uh, let me let me go uh, and fortify the color here on the the on the uh, that I've already laid down for the skin tones. Security blanket blue. I kind of like that. Yeah. One thing I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need to go in and uh, change out a lot of my uh, nibs to be careful about them though because those are still expensive that's been the there's been a, a shortage of Copics coming out of Japan and the problem is the brush nibs um, because they are handmade and when the Copics became super popular see how there's just a tiny bit of um, smearing in there but not too much I mean I Probably, if I didn't say something, you probably wouldn't even notice it. But anyway, the um, the brush nibs are handmade, and that that is not a process that scales very well. And the Copics just exploded in popularity um, because, well, because because people on YouTube discovered them and started doing videos and. And other artists would see that and say, oh, those are really cool. I want to get some of those. And you know, so there you go. You know, Tom, you better be careful because there is a master punster lurking in the background. Um, 
And trust me, you do not want to get into a pun war with him. You will lose. You will lose. You will. I mean, I know, I know how good you are with puns and everything. You will lose going up against Bruce. You will. Okay, so uh, let's see. I have quite a few nice blues uh, here. Um, let me let me get my my card here. You can tell I use this one a lot. <laughs> um, boy, does that one get used because that is. Let's see. Uh, is this, this? I think this is. This is this is Sam's top. This is the same color as Sam's top. So there's that. Um, there's this one. Kind of liking that one. We'll set that one aside because that we might come back to that one. Uh, this is peacock blue. Now what I'm looking at here is how these colors blend together. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one for my master color. And then this will be my um, um, shadow because it's a little darker. So what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do here, is I'm going to kind of outline some sh some areas that would be the shine, and kind of that it gives her a nice glossy coat Now, while I'm uh, while I'm filling this in, we need um, a design for her top. So, uh, be thinking and talking about the top. And I've left it wide wide open. Um, do you want do you want to have kind of the bikini top like Sam has? Um, where she has the bare midriff. Do you want do you want to do something a little more um, um, covering? Um, kind of continuing on the total request Tuesday theme, uh, but only on Friday. Apparently. So you know, since I'm, I'm gonna, you know, the, the a, a horse has has kind of a, it's actually the now the the pectoral muscles there. So I'm gonna actually kind of, and I'm gonna do those in shading rather than actually draw them out, which is why I didn't draw them. So I'm kind of just put some some little highlights in there for that, knowing where those are going to go. And we'll get most of this fiddly detail work, and then we can go back and go back in 
and hit the major areas the larger areas with the chisel tip well okay it needs to be something a little more form-fitting because I can't add lines here and I've already drawn so a turtleneck really can't add a turtleneck um, So whatever it, 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 it she, she's going to wear, it's going to be somewhat form-fitting, obviously. Because we do have the limitations of what's already been laid down. Art thrives with limitations. So we just have to work with that. Yeah, okay, midriff, bare, bare midriff, I, I, I kind of, I, I tend to agree with you there. Again, see how that's kind of sketchy, uh, not, not as, not as deeply colored as right there. We'll take care of that with another pass of color at least another pass of color no red shirt okay uh, no, 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 uh, she's not in Starfleet, obviously. Uh, actually, there's an interesting story about why that, why it seemed like there was always, there was always the guys in the red shirts that they got killed. And it was because when they, the first season of Star Trek, the, up the, uh, um, uh, the uniforms were, were made out of, of a lore material that was very difficult to clean. And so the second season, they made them out of um, uh, easier to clean materials. And um, um, so the older shirts, they would just use those for, um, uh, for the extras. They would, they would hand them to the extras. And the ones that were the most durable were the, were the, were the engineering shirts um, and um, so by the third season the only shirts that were left that were not hero shirts that were not for the main characters were the were the red velour shirts left over from the first season and so um, that's why uh, you tended to have ensign red shirt and ensign cannon fodder uh, wearing red shirts and um, and we're back to Star Trek trivia again. It's amazing. All right. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on doing the, the the midriff, but first I'm gonna I'm gonna what I'm gonna I'm gonna need to find a color for. Okay, this is the color that I did for her skin tone, and now I'm gonna try and find a nice. Highlight color that's going to be oh that okay I think that might work. Let me try this one. Man, six and one half dozen the other. The second one seems to have more ink in it than the than the first one did. So I'm going to go with it. Amazing how just that one little line of color adds. 
adds uh, so much more depth to the whole piece. And fleshes it out a little bit more. Okay. Now I'm going to um, do a color in here in her mouth to darken that up so that it that's too much. These neutral grays, I use these a lot. Boy, I use those neutral grays a lot. Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, especially, I didn't use it, uh, but the, the one that's darker, just one shade darker than that, N4, because that is, um, you can see that I use it a lot. That's Sam's Pelt. Um, okay. So, what um, what color have we decided on? Sorry, needed some water there. Water break there. What uh, what color have we decided on for her top? And is, is she going to be long sleeve, short sleeved, uh, no sleeves? What what do y'all what do y'all want to do? Um, while you are while I'm waiting for y'all to get a response, I'm going to go and uh, uh, beef up the color here. No sleeves. Well, you know, we've already got a, we've already got a blue and we've already got a green. Let's. Uh, I'd like to try and find something that's um, a little bit that that's from the other parts of the spectrum. Well, I need to go and add the. Um, Shading to her hair, so I need to. After I do that, I'll do this. I'll do that. Then I'll go in and hit this. Uh, hit the, uh, the 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 pelt with the shading. This didn't work out the way I wanted it to, but that's okay. is all about the embracing the little surprises that come around when you screw up. The little happy accidents and then you tell everybody that you meant to do it that way. Silver and khaki. Uh, okay. Yes. The... the uh, Let's see what that reacts to the olive. All right, that might work. Let's see. If nothing else, I can I can always use it to build up uh, uh, as as part of building up a color.
All right, now come back with the original olive and um, use that to blend. See how that's blending together? Kind of creating a bit of a, of a gradient there. I want that to be sharp because that's the back side of her hair. So I want that transition to be sharp. But that one I want to blend a little bit. So you see how that blends like that? Now another thing that I could try, and I'm not going to do it tonight, but I might might try it on another one in the future. Doing, you know, trying to get this kind of hair effect with the hair is um, is um, Copic makes. Oh geez, it's stuck. Oh come on! I had a an, an ink spill over here, and now ah. Bloody! Oh. Okay. At least that one was sealed up. Ah, there we go. Uh, Copic makes this opaque white, which is basically just white paint, and I could go in and use that to uh, to do all of these areas, but uh, not tonight. So now I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to and then I hit it again with the original. To blend, so I, I start in the in the new color and push it out. That's what they said to do. And now you can see there's there's this gradient here from this from this green through to the, to the olive, and I think that is just so cool. The the thought that you know doing that with with markers. Uh, you would um, I never would have you know you, you, you I see that you know you see that on cart on the um, uh, computer art but you know just to be able to do that physically in the real world without an airbrush because it used to be that's what it would take to do this all right now I'm going to do this um, To her on her pelt Put that down there underneath okay this is what I was talking about where I was gonna do this back to the original and blend it. I really want to get some blending card. It's a paper that's really designed more for, for doing this kind of Thing than this watercolor. The watercolor paper really does absorb the uh, some of the some of the colors a little better than than it does others, or more than it does others. And um, like these blues, 
So these aren't blending as well as as nicely as the uh... all right so yeah this is what I did the uh, the main All right, so we're going to make her arms bare then. I'm going to go ahead and just color those in. And this one's gotten a lot of the, the the brush tips got a lot of play in it, so it's it needs it's time to replace it. All right, get that the bare midriff here. Hold on just one second here. Let me just see here. R double zero. Do I have R double zero? No, I don't. Oh, doggone it. Nope. All right. I'm going to have to order more R double zero ink. Or I'm really running low I can tell I can feel it I can feel the marker giving out on me so all right what color are we gonna make that top guys we are at the point where I need to need a color Something that I've got plenty of ink for. <laughs> uh, that would be nice. Uh, yeah, th that's a possibility. I'm kind of liking that. Well, I'm kind of liking that one better. And then maybe this for a uh, for the highlight color. No. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Orange. How about an orange? Four different shades of white. Well, silver. Silver is going to be different. I don't have silver, and silver, uh, silver is not a, really a color. It's it's um it's a texture. Uh, and that's going to take a lot of more than I am capable of doing right now because silver has um, has reflections, it has uh, texture. It's it's a very and especially since we're dealing with these these rounded shapes here, uh, silver is just not going to work. I'm sorry, it's just it's just not going to not going to work. Um, Especially with my, at, at my skill level as an artist, um, maybe maybe one of these days it will. But right now, uh, we're just going to need to have some kind of solid color there. I'm sorry. I wish we, I, I would like to do silver. Silver. I mean, that would be really cool. But 
I just know I'm not going to be able to pull, and I'm not going to be able to pull that one off because that one's empty. Um, I just know that I'm not going to be able to pull off a silver. I'm sorry. Um, uh, looking at my oranges here, I'm kind of a little uh, limited on my oranges, unfortunately. See, what did I? What did I, where did I just? Okay, that's that's where I made that one. And let's see, what's that one? That, that one's the dry one. But unfortunately, but actually I have two of those. And that one might be, because I accidentally bought. And now that's a little too, too much. Maybe this one. Okay, let's see. That, I like that. I like that orange. And... Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, so I'm going to set those aside. Actually, I'm going to put them back. One of these days, hopefully soon, I'm going to redo everything in my studio because... I'm just, I'm not happy with the studio as it's, uh-oh, uh uh-oh, that's not right. <laughs> Let's see, was it this one? This one and this one, yeah, this one, yeah, this one, and yeah, there's there's my highlight. Okay, uh, I'm not really satisfied with the way that the studio is set up. Uh, I think, actually, I think, I think the orange is going to work well with that. There's There's my two oranges right there. And I think that's going to work well. So. I think we're going to do a high neck here. And I'll go and I'll add, I'll do the skin tone in that section there in just a moment. I'm running out of this R00 ink. And you see the difference between here and here? This part was is is has got a second coat on it. Um, which I don't know if I have enough ink for. <laughs> oh boy. Looks like uh, Blick is going to be getting a, an order here tonight. <laughs> um, Blick is uh, uh, or, or Jerry's Artorama. One of one of one of them is going to get an order here tonight of Copic inks, uh, the refills. And I have to go in and, and, and do detail with Okay. 
That one, it's dead, Jim. Alright, then, uh, yes, that's the one. Nope, nope, this is... Gonna continue the same um, shadow line that I had there. All right, and then uh, come back over this with a little of a, to do a little bit of a blend here. Also to intensify the color there. All right, that uh, that actually came out pretty good. Uh, so we're at uh, we're right now we're at 114 in the show. So I'm gonna uh, just do. A quick bit here of no, not that one. Um, here we go. Uh, after I put these pens back. Uh, okay, so uh, this is the point in the show where I usually ask any questions. <laughs> any other questions? Uh, yes, I am glad I picked that. Um, Uh, I know Matt had been asking for a, uh, a belt, but um, I really, I didn't draw one in, so I, that's the reason why she doesn't have one. And also, that's kind of, uh, it's kind of Sam's trademark, too, so. Uh, all right, let me put these back up. But anyway, as I was saying, I want to redesign my studio because I'm I'm just not. Oh yeah, I forgot to put that one on. Because um, I'm not really pleased with uh, accessibility of stuff. Um, a a um, uh, web show that I like that I've been watching a lot of that I've just have been getting inspired by is um, Tested which is um, Adam Savage from, from uh, Mythbusters. And, um, you know, what, what's Adam been up to after Mythbusters? Well, he's been doing a web show called Tested. And he's actually become a pretty, uh, one of the leading YouTube personalities. And um, he... Has a, he, he did. Uh, you know, he's talked about on here about the organization of his shop. Uh, something he calls uh, concept. He's called first order of retrievability, which is that basically that everything is accessible without having to move something else to get at it. If you've 
if something is behind or underneath something else and you have to move it in order to access it then you do not then it has not achieved first order of accessibility and I really like that idea of being able to immediately grab you know grab anything grab this grab that and not have to right now I have to sometimes like for some pens and things like that I have to move other pens out of the way in order to get at them and that I realize that bugs me and I really want to try to optimize things here so that I can um, achieve that first order of retrievability. I think if I'm not mistaken, in, 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 in traditional manga, don't they actually draw the whole eye out and then color over it or something like that? Something like that. Oh well. See, I I've never really I never really got into uh, into into manga. Now that I know where these lines are, I can actually put them in. I'm getting better with the brush pen. I'm not, not really confident enough to try a real brush, but I'm getting better with the brush pen. So. But anyway, as I was saying, I want to I want to redesign the layout of all of my shelves and everything so that uh, hopefully I can at least come closer to uh, that um, state of organizational nirvana that Adam Savage defines as first order of retrievability <laughs> um, and it just shows you how much of a nerd I am that I would get excited about something like that but if you saw what a mess my studio is right now you would understand kind of have this split personality on the one hand um, I'm OCD about I want I want a place for everything and everything in its place and on the other hand I'm um, I'm a total slob There is a part of me that geeks out over uh, seeing things all nice and neat and organized. If 
like having Felix and Oscar all in one body. It's kind of weird. Very weird, in fact. But par for the course for me. And you notice I'm the, 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 the brush pen that I'm using is not the Copic. Because I, I do have a Copic brush multi-liner. And I'm not using it. I mean, this is a this is a Prismacolor actually. Uh, and the reason why is because um, uh, my brush pen, the, 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 the brush nib needs replacing badly on the 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 Copic and um, these were freebies uh, at from I think from uh, the Southeast chapter uh, meeting um, they were part of the goodie bag so I they were free so I had them so I used them <laughs> reminds me of a story of a friend of mine uh, when he was in film school, he had an assignment, and he was supposed to, uh, the assignment was use only available lights, available light, which means normally, which mean means you use whatever light is at the location. Uh, but he happened to work at, for the PBS station there at the University of Georgia, and he had access to all their equipment. So he goes and he lights the scene, and the professor is just furious. Um, so I thought I told you that you could only use available lights. My friend says, well, the lights were available, so I used them. Uh, that professor was a little more precise after that. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so the pen was available, so I used it. How, how, how did I get, how did I get any ink on me? Oh, I know, it was, well, I was trying to pry all this apart. Okay, well, there we go. How about that? not too shabby um, I'm really pleased with the blending especially up here you know it, it's kind of funny it look the blending looks better um, after a few minutes than it did when I was actually doing it um, especially here uh, the blending really kind of came together ties the room together um, as the dude might say um, and uh, so anyway, there's there's Patty. Nicely done, guys. I uh, couldn't have done it without you because you know I got the colors from you. So very nicely done. Um, and um, that's uh, we're at an hour and a half. So I uh, appreciate y'all being here. Let me uh, set this back up here, and then there we go. Uh, put my eyes back in so I can see what I'm doing. Hi. Oh, oh hi. Oh, wow. That does look good. <laughs> uh, no. uh, all right. So uh, I think that's going to, I think it's going to wrap it up for the night unless we've got uh, any last, last minute uh, questions. Um, because we are uh, one minute and 25, one hour and 25 minutes, 26 minutes elapsed time here. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, uh, next week, next week we've got a, there'll be a show on Monday, which is the third. There won't be one on the fourth because I'm going to be too busy calming my dogs down from all the fireworks. Um, but uh, that's that's going to be on uh, uh, the. Uh, we'll pick it back up. On Wednesday, we'll do the we'll do the requests on Wednesday instead of on Tuesday because the Fourth of July is uh, Tuesday. Um, so uh, so there we go. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed uh, that. Uh, I really did because I think it came out really nice. The hair. Uh, I'm really I'm kind of li I'm liking the um, um, you know the the, the shading here especially in here that came out really nice uh, great call on the color there Matt thanks a lot um, okay so um, I guess we've got any more questions so 
Um, I don't need to get any sleep because I'm wide awake now. Wouldn't you know it? But anyway, uh, until Monday, uh, I'll see you then. Good night. Drive safely. Ta da! Isn't that nice? That's a nice way to end the show, right there. And fade to black. <laughs>